Take the Lincoln Tunnel through Weehawken, through Secaucus, across the Hackensack River, and you'll arrive, as we have, at MetLife Stadium at East Rutherford, New Jersey. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. A first carry for the former Oklahoma Sooner, Joe Mixon. And he tries to keep the legs churning, but he's going to be stopped behind the line. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. 23 yards the pick up there. And we always knew the potential was there, and Collins took a massive leap in his third season, realizing that potential, producing just under 1,300 yards a year ago. The Texans love his big frame and believe in this young man, and he'll be their big-time receiver. It's caught at the 10. Touchdown, Houston. Nico Collins. 51 yards. And the Texans march right down the field in three plays to claim the early advantage. Well, they said that they wanted to get him involved early, and what a way to cap their opening drive, Charles. We know he's one of the fastest receivers in the NFL, and he showcased it on that play. And when you have a guy like that, you want to make sure the defense sees him early, right? You want to see how they're going to adjust, how they're going to try and guard him because they can't replicate his speed in practice unless they've got one of the few guys who are as fast as he is. And all it took was one drive, he burned them, and I don't think it's the last time they call his number in this one. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And New York set to take the field. Rodgers and the Jets now with a first and 10 at their own 26. They'll try and start this drive in the air. A short throw to Conklin, the tight end. They'll give him four yards there, and that'll bring up second down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And he'll have a Jets first down as he's able to get this up past the 40. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner, but to me... Their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. Here's Rodgers to throw. Taking in left side, it's Wilson. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. When the hitch route is run really well, that jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space, all you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. Hand off, running left, here's Hall. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. On first down, right back to Hall. 
And good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. Give him 12 yards there, and the Jets have a first. A couple of nice carries back-to-back -back here, establishing the ground game a bit. Yeah, these are bare-bones runs now. I mean, they're getting substantial yardage, the kind of yards you're looking for, right? Let's go ahead and use a cliche. Stay ahead of the change, right? Five, more, five or more yards each time, that's what you're looking for in setting the tone and getting your offensive line going. Good sign on the opening drive. That's good for a first down, his second catch of the opening drive. What a drive this has been, just chewing up the yardage. And here's one of their best plays yet as they finally get down into the red zone and look to finish this off with six. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Now it's Rodgers. Going right back to Wilson. Yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. Well, that's not just his first, not his second, already his third completion here on the opening drive. And I, I think it's safe to say that getting him the ball in this game, one of their top priorities. And the top priority for the defense has got to be finding ways to cover him. And I don't think you can have one basic coverage to get it done. You have to throw a number of coverages at him, make him think as he's running. And he's going to take it in for a Jets touchdown. Brees Hall. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Jets respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal, they've got to like the way that they started this ball game. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive. <laughs> they watch the other side just score. But remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Here's second and ten. Stroud to throw it. Man open. That's complete to Dalton Schultz. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass in the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought... Yeah, he might be locked in for this one. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose, and boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Mix it up the middle. And it'll be a minimum pickup here as it will take us to the end of the first quarter. 7-7, seven, seven, our score after one. Texans football to start quarter two as they've got it with a third down coming up. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. They're able to convert with a gain of four. 
Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. Stroud sets up the play action. This is caught. It's Woods. Touchdown, Houston. Robert Woods, 36 yards. And the Texans have taken the lead. So the quarterback drops to throw, looks over, and boom, a guy that wide open, he has to be thinking, wait a minute, this is some kind of a dream. This is too easy. Yeah, a great dream. One you don't want to wake up from. But for the defense, almost feels like there was a bust in coverage. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and that makes the score 14 to 7. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And able to get this out to the 25. Back onto the field come the New York Jets for their second drive. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. Now Hall to start the drive. A beautiful fake. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 52 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. His first carry of their second drive, pretty solid. And, of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hurtling through them. On first and 10, it's Hall. Muscles him off. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. The two big plays right in succession as this one goes for 27. Good, strong, explosive run that started inside, which means you've got to control those defensive linemen, the defensive tackles, the nose guards. Those guys have to be controlled. How about the offensive line, the job they just did? Yeah, key that A-gap usually on those runs, right? That's where it all starts because everyone wants to kind of control that area. It disrupts things from the defensive side and the offensive side. As we just saw, it opens up possibilities. That's now a pair of explosive plays in succession, both north of 20 yards. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. So three plays already first and goal, and they are wasting little time to throw. It's Rodgers, and that is incomplete. So an incomplete pass a moment ago, and that leads to second and goal. Now Rodgers. And this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying... No more. We're making a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. Rodgers now on third and goal. And he's in. Touchdown, Jets. Aaron Rodgers. A ten-yard touchdown run. And the Jets are an extra point away from evening this one up. That's a tough one there defensively because look at the stops they got on first and second down and it was first and second and goal. And then on third down, they cover the receivers, but they leave an alley open for him to find, and he does. That is frustrating. You do almost everything right, and he still ends up in the end zone.
This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. And now out comes Houston. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. I've got a good friend in football who always talks about predictive history. He's got one of their two touchdowns. You can understand why they tried to find him again. Weren't able to connect, but the thought, that was good. Second and ten. And the slot man goes in motion left. Inside handoff to Mixon. And he's going to get about seven yards on that one up to around the 33. But this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and 10. Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting him to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. From the gun on third down, here's Stroud. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Texans first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. Short yardage situation. You have to wonder if they thought that they were just going to run it inside. But you have to be cognizant of the back slipping out of the backfield trying to find some open space. And that's exactly what he does to the tune of a first down. Mixon with a first down carry. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. The passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle. And that's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. Second down and eight. Once again, they run with Mixon. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And a pretty good burst there as he'll get this across midfield and down to the 46. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. Open ball downfield is Woods. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A good pick up there, a 22. Oh, I like that play call there. After a run for good yards, you get a defense thinking they'll go back to the well. So that's a great time to call play action and give your receivers a little extra edge. And they complete the pass there for another first down. From the gun, a give to Mixon. Sharp there with his feet gets him a little extra space and then drop just inside the 20. Seven yards on the pickup there and it'll leave him with a second and three. That's a strong pickup right there on first down and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Second down and three. Stroud looking to throw. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Here comes play number nine now as they come up on a third and three. A shotgun snap to Stroud. Over the middle. There's a diving catch. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And that could be one of those turning point plays in a ball game. A field goal gets you the lead here, but they want to make a statement and get six points. And they're certainly going to get that opportunity as they get the conversion and set up first and goal. Stroud out of the gun here. 
And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Will McDonald gets in there to take him down. Well, that's what they have to do more of defensively, not just getting sacks. We have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. Stroud. Catch is made. It's Schultz on the out route. And so close, he gets it to the one. Out of bounds right there. They'll still have a third and goal now, despite picking up 13 yards on that pass play. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that. And they're going to get to him. A sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and they take a 17-14 lead. Well, I don't know if they would have gone for it on fourth and goal anyway, but the sack on third down pretty much made their mind up for them. You're exactly right about that. And this is a tough place on the field to take a sack because, as you just noted, it took the decision-making away from them. Now they have to go for a field goal instead of potentially going for it. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. And the Jets going to go on offense one last time in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Throwing is Rodgers. Over the middle, it's complete. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as the stoppage will come with 23 seconds to go till halftime. Here's a second and three now from the 33. Now Rodgers. And that will be incomplete with a clock showing 18 seconds now to go. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Throwing now is Rodgers. On the out route, this is Adams with a catch. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Now that's absolutely frustrating for a defender. Had a chance to get him on the ground before he got to the sideline, but what great vision and understanding where he is on the field as he headed for the marker and picked up the first down. Got a man. It's the rookie out of the third round. Now a signal and a timeout call as it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. Zerline's kick is up and through. But for almost eight years, 64 stood as the NFL record for the longest field goal. That has since been eclipsed. It's now 66, but still 64-yarder. Pretty impressive, CD. Absolutely agree with that because if you drill a 60-yarder in an NFL game, you've got a lot to be proud of, record or no record. And only a handful of guys can even attempt it. Excellent job there 
putting that one through the pipes. So still a little bit of time following the made field goal, but we are tied as the kick's away. And here's Steven Sims on the return from his end zone. And the Texans going to get the football one final time here in this first half. And they'll have time for one play. There's two seconds on the clock. The final second ticks by, and that's going to do it for the first half of play. So we've hit intermission. It's halftime. This is the NFL, and it's a presentation of EA Sports. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there. Call it the 26. Now the Jets going to take over on offense to begin this third quarter. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Now a second and ten. Rodgers now to throw. They'll set up the screen for Hall. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch, I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. Third and three. Rodgers going to throw, and that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Good clean play. No flags coming out of the pocket of the officials. Turns into an incompletion, and that should get him off the field with a three and out. Here's Thomas Morstead now, and surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Now Stroud. He'll complete this one to Collins. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. And his play caller does a nice job of giving him an easy throw to start this drive, and he takes advantage of it. The completion sets up a manageable second down. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. Stroud off the play fake. He's got a man complete. Now he breaks free in the middle of the field. Touchdown, Houston. Nico Collins with his second touchdown of the night. And the Texans have broken the tie. I know we often laugh and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game, and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to preserve that lead. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And they will take a seven-point lead. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Now the Jet offense about to take over as they head out onto the field. 
Uh, Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. They'll start on the ground. Hall. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Ball again on second down. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Had to pass there, third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. Now here's Morstead now as he sends this one away. Fair catch called for in May, but now we'll have to see about the penalty. And that hurts. If it was running into the kicker, wouldn't be a first down. Roughing, it is a first. And just think about the differences between the two. Running into the kicker almost feels inadvertent, just a small tap, so to speak. But when you rough him, usually bodies are hitting the ground and flying all different places. And the difference is five yards or 15. And in this case, that's a big play. Uh, give to Hall running right. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Ball again. And he'll be tackled right on the midfield logo. 107 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Third and two. From midfield, here's Rodgers. And yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Here's Thomas Morstead now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. They'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. That one will set them back nearly 10 yards here on first down on the sack. Well, partner, I would say just avoid play action, but that's not just been the problem. This defense, they've been getting pressure on all types of pass plays and really piling up the sacks in this contest. Throwing on second and long. Stroud, they'll let this go deep for Collins. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one, weren't able to do so. Throwing now is Stroud. Shakes off the sack. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. 
Decent gain on the scramble to six, but now it's fourth. Nice call on defense, rolling out the nickel package for that big third down play, and he did an excellent job locking down coverage and forcing him to try and run for it, and he doesn't get there, which brings up a big fourth down call. On is the punter Townsend as he gets this one away. This is fielded at the 27. It'll go as a 50-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Jets will take over first and 10. Here's the Jet offense now. They head out to take over. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. Oh, look at the juke. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. Thought they were going to have him down a lot earlier, but he was able to shed that tackle. Shows the value of the weight room, doesn't it? Shows the value of the attitude when you run the football. Don't go down easily, break a few tackles, gain some additional yardage. To throw is Rodgers. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. And the Texans will have solid field position here as they take over at their 45-yard line. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here at MetLife Stadium. It's the Texans in control of the football and leading this game as well as we start the fourth. And Stroud now to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Here's Stroud. He gets this in the hands of Mixon, and he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Stroud to throw it. A right, short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. Seven yards there and a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's a give to Mixon. He juked him. Heck of a broken tackle and able to work this down near the 23. 
45 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, you know me, partner. I never tell them to back off of being aggressive, but sometimes you see the consequences when you're overly aggressive and you don't secure tackles. Guys break through. Trying to sell out to pry that football loose, and just as you said, cost some yardage. Yeah, you got to go get him. Stand him up first before you go for the ball. Don't just go for it initially. And he's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. On a slam, here's Collins. And the Texans are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. Mixon is going to go backwards. He'll lose yardage back to the five. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. We knew both of these safeties were good in run support, but how about the play we just saw there? How about that closing speed? Able to get to the outside part of the field and turn that play into a loss. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. Another try for Mixon. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Were you as surprised as I was that they actually ran it on second down there? I thought that they would go ahead and throw it in every situation here. <laughs> yeah, they've thrown for three touchdown passes. Now here, I think they probably go back to the air. Yeah, I think so. But ordinarily, second down is when you run your play fake, your play action, show run and throw the ball. Now they brought up third down and left to throw it anyway. Here's a run with Mixon. And this time he is in. Yes. Joe Mixon. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Texans have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. Well, he'd been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and the lead now up to 14. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Another go around now for the Jets offense. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and it's second down. A good start there on first down. They've got to have this drive. No doubt about it. Down a couple of scores. They have to find a way to put it in the end zone. Chunk plays, explosive plays. That will be the key to this drive. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Hall. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A great job there. And that old cliche, taking what the defense gives you comes right into play. Nothing too out of the ordinary about the throw. Just a little dump off over the middle. But what is out of the ordinary is what he did with it after the catch. Not only did he grab the ball, but how about the significant yardage he picked up after he pulled. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Derek Stingley picks it, and the Texans are going to take over once again at their own 37-yard line.
Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. Now they are really in the driver's seat here, enjoying this lead late in the fourth quarter. The defense does have all three timeouts, but at this point, doesn't look like it's going to matter much. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. They'll try to eat some clock with Mixer. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. The Jets going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Again, it's Mixon. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. Now they need two. Here's third down. Play action. Stroud now. He'll buy some time right. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Will McDonald able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. This is a little hard for me to compute because I'm watching sack after sack happen. But somehow, they're still behind in the game. I would expect all of this defensive pressure to translate to them taking a lead. And thus far, it hasn't happened. Time's winding down. They don't want to waste this type of performance from these ace pass rushers. This one will sail out of bounds. It'll depend on the spot here. And the side judge says that went out at the seven-yard line. The offense for the Jets ready to take over. They have a little bit of time left here, but this one not going to go their way. And this is where, in this situation for me, you just go ahead and run out the clock, shake hands, congratulations, and move on. Because now, <laughs> you're not going to make up for what's happened during the game in this last sequence. We'll see what they do here in this last sequence. And an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. This offense has had its troubles moving the ball all night. So now you get in this situation, hard to imagine that suddenly they're going to start clicking and moving the ball downfield. They'll try again here, second and ten. Here's Rodgers to throw. And Rodgers is going to go down the end zone it's a safety well this defense has been smothering all game long why not give them two more points here in the closing minutes well they've certainly earned it they've gotten the better of this offensive line for four quarters and this sack here will just be a little icing on the cake now the free kick comes after the safety from the 20 as they bring the punter on to try and get some hang time here and they'll accept that penalty To Amigo Stroud, and that is going to be all she wrote. So Houston going to come away here with the victory. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second-half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last point of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. 
Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.